Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here. Today we are going to be doing a walkthrough, a much requested walkthrough of the Slavic Legends Tarot by Taroteca. Now at the time that I am recording this, all I have to go off of is this book and this deck. I don't have a guidebook. I, I've heard from the creators that they're working on a PDF or downloadable guidebook, but I have not seen it yet. I don't know what the status is on that. And to be honest, I haven't really looked because my hope with this deck is that it will work out of the box just based on the imagery alone. And that way I can dive into the stories if I want to, but that otherwise it can just be a beautiful usable tarot deck. That's what I'm hoping for. So this is what the box looks like. It's designed to look like a book. It's so beautiful. So you have all these gorgeous details. I'm just a little too zoomed in, I think. There we go. So you can really see. It's got all this like gold foiling on it. It's really a gorgeous presentation. Really, really beautiful. And then when you open up the book, the, the box <laughs> that feels like a book you have the cards inside and that is as it goes now there's a couple different finish options to choose from for this deck um i think they're all matte one is a uv matte which is typically going to be a lot slipperier than this one which is like a soft touch matte it, it's like a really slippy version of a rose petal so it still moves really nicely it's not fuzzy um, feeling if that makes any sense, but it is quite matte. So it absorbs like pretty much all the light uh, But it's really really beautiful And then this is the backing on that version, which is the more soft touch version. It has these blue backs I wish I had the version that had the brown backs and the gold gilding because I think that's a better match for this aesthetic um, but this is still really beautiful. So this one is again that super matte version the cardstock itself feels very flexible. Um, it feels like it's going to shuffle really nicely. We'll do a shuffle test at the end. But for now, I just wanna sort of take these images at face value and see how they would work for me to read with just based on what I see in the imagery alone without overthinking the origin of the stories that they're based on or anything like that. Um, so I just wanna see if it's going to be ultimately usable. So you have the title at the bottom. There is a number in the artwork up at the top. So we have a zero up here for the fool and we see the fool written here and the borders are black. This one's really sweet. We see somebody going out onto this cliff edge. It looks like to pluck this little flower, which is really a great image for the fool because of course our fool is typically holding a white rose or white flower. It's sort of a symbol of their purity and innocence, right? So here we're, we have somebody going, a youth sort of going for that flower, but in a risky space. So we get that Im imagery of the fool, I think pretty well. Here we have the magician and all the tools are on the table. So we have that sort of Rider Waite Smith element. We have a sword, a coin, a wand and a cup clearly visible. Um, this magician seems a little less um, approachable or friendly than, they, than a magician appears in some decks, but I like that because the magician does have an angle where they can be a little bit more on the manipulative side, so it depends on how you read it. I do like that if you're looking for just the fact that he has all the tools, that imagery is there for you. This high priestess is really, really beautiful. She's still framed in a similar way as we might see in a Rider Waite Smith, and instead of the crescent moon at her feet, we have a crescent moon shaped uh, sickle down here at the lower right hand corner of the card. She's still sort of blocking this doorway or window behind her and the candle and the book give this idea of the, the sort of depth and secrecy that you can sometimes feel with the high priestess so that really works. This empress is absolutely breathtaking. She literally looks like um, a Gaia type goddess figure and I would love to know her story, truly. She looks really, really beautiful. Um, by the way, speaking of story, uh, I was given a tip in my recent deck roundup video where I first showed that I had received this deck uh, there is another YouTuber who has done a walkthrough and talks about some of the stories. I'm go I haven't watched it myself yet. Um, I really wanted to go into this with no preconceived ideas. I wanted to just see if I could read it or understand the imagery without that. But I'm going to link that video down below and I plan to watch it myself after this to really soak in um, any knowledge from somebody more familiar with the stories and characters in this deck. So I've, I've had that... Um, bit of information provided to me by multiple people. So it sounds like it's probably going to be a really good resource for getting to know this deck. So I will link that down below for you. This emperor has such an Odin-y kind of feel. I love him. Um, he's amazing. He looks um, strong, but stern. Uh, I like that in an emperor. Oh, I love that this Hierophant is out of doors. It feels very mystical. We have the keys um, hanging from the belt here, but I like that it's out in nature instead of in an indoor building. Yeah, they've done a really good job, I feel like, with working in the Rider Waite Smith symbology, but making it fit, fit with the scene. Here we have the lovers. This is so gorgeous. These wreaths with candles on them floating in the water. Um, this young couple, it's so beautiful. 
the chariot. This is, this literally looks like, this has got to be Baba Yaga. Yeah? Somebody, is Baba Yaga a uh, Slavic? Yeah, right? I, you guys, I'm so bad. I'm sorry. Um, this reminds me of Baba Yaga. It has to be, I'm sure. But um, as the chariot, um, I really want to know. I really want to know more. I, I have to. I want to know more. So we'll find out. But um, yeah, I, she's wild. I love that. I love the dark and the white. We have like a crow and then a white like snowy owl here. This is such a cool image. Really unique for the chariot. We have strength here with this girl riding a, yo, is that a bison? I'm really, I'm really bad with animals. Um, but I love that. I love the harmony between the two of them. This hermit card is an absolutely breathtaking image and I love it so, so much. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. There's a lot of, um, the imagery in this deck is darker, like the tones are darker in general. Um, I love this Wheel of Fortune, which is to me very clearly a spinning wheel. And we do have these hands sort of manipulating the threads around here, which I think is just really cool. They're kind of ghostly hands. I'd be curious to hear more about any lore that's associated with this one. Beautiful justice card holding a candle upright as well as a scale, a set of scales here. That's beautiful. This hanged man, also absolutely stunning. I love that it looks like he's in the under underworld, um, in the roots of like maybe the world tree, that kind of idea. That's what it feels like to me. I love that, how that looks. And this death card is a real refreshing change from a more traditional looking death card that we might associate with like a Rider Waite Smith tarot. I love all the ribbons. I love the idea that in a way death could be celebrated. I don't even know if that's the point here, but that's kind of what I'm taking from it. Oh my gosh, this temperance card is the most soothing image ever ever this like many antlered stag in the background these little rivulets and pools this looks like a healing place like a magical healing place dang the devil is um dang <laughs> i don't know what else to say about that it's very doubly devil um and then we have the tower um this looks pretty intense it gives you the it gives me the feeling of like that lightning really coming from the divine, like the gods or God coming down and like smiting that tower and being like, no, 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 this is not, this is, we need to destroy this, this isn't right. Um, I like that actual depiction. The star, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. It's everything I need in a star. I think it's interesting how we have day, it looks like um, day and night represented here. I'd love to know more about them. <gasps> this moon is so spectacular. I mean, this art is, it's out of this world. It's so good. And then the sun. I do feel like, I feel like I this would mean more to me if I understood the lore for sure. Judgment. This is also really beautiful. Almost like a Pied Pipery kind of vibe here with these little creatures kind of listening to her play. And then we have the world. We have death down here. We have new life up above. And that brings us into the minors. What a gorgeous Ace of Wands. Yeah, this is going to feel very Rider Waite Smithy. I like that he has the map there for the Two of Wands, the considering of possibilities. Our Three of Wands, we're actually on the ship, we're, um, or we're at the docks at least, seeing the ship off. Love that. Very classic Four of Wands, sort of Maypole almost like situation there. Ooh, I love these like dragons fighting in the Five of Wands. And we have a celebratory six. Yep, seven looks like he's up on high ground defending his territory. So again, these I feel like are working really well. I love this flaming bird or phoenix or whatever this is, whatever type of flaming bird this is, flying along with the wands, which makes me wonder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight wands plus the bird. Cool. And then we have the nine of wands. Looks very strong, but he's taken a bit of a hit there. Love that the Ten of Wands is this woman carrying this wood in the cold. I feel like that's a really strong image for the Ten of Wands. Here's our page. Love him. Love the peacock's feather in his hat. That's so Page of Wands to me. Then we have our, wait, did I skip the knight? I, wait, hello? He's out of order, what's happening? Okay, there's our knight. Love him, oh my gosh. The fire at the feet, oh. Then we have our queen, love all the sunflowers, and our king. So then we have cups. This looks like it's literally happening underwater, which is amazing. She almost looks like a mer person of some kind. 
I guess she's not underwater because that's the water right there. She's like emerging out of the water. Oh, love that. Two of cups. The three. Four. Very classic Rider Waite Smith type scenes here. The five. I love you can see her reflection in the water. The six. Oh, this baby. The seven. Instead of things in the cups, they're actually on the cups. Like the cups are decorated to show these different things that could be, um, we could be choosing. The eight. Oh, I love how the cups are dangling from this like sort of tree bridge as he leaves. The nine of cups. Oh, I love that. And the ten. These are so pretty. They definitely sort of take you into the into the woods in a way. They feel like there's a lot of this is happening in the natural world, even though it's quite people-y. There's um, just this feeling of being transported somewhere else, which I love. Then we have the Page of Cups, the Knight of Cups. So the speed of the horses, the action of the horses is really matching the traditional Rider Waite Smith. Love this queen and this king. Look at this pair. So gorgeous. Next we have the ace or the swords. So we have the ace of swords, the two. I love that she's up in the tree with these golden wings. That's beautiful. The three, and these are actually swans that are sort of all tangled up with one another. The four, I love the hibernating bear here for the four of swords. The five, the six, the seven of swords. So it's almost like after the act, like he's gotten all these swords and he's kind of like examining his booty up in the tree there. <laughs> then we have the eight of swords, the nine. Oh, that is quite nightmarish. The 10, oof. Oh, it's a stag, that's so sad. And then the page of swords. Our Knight of Swords, again, real good here. It's a little red. At first glance, it almost looks like the Page of Wands, or excuse me, the Knight of Wands, I mean, but the wings will really bring you back to air, I think. Then we have the Queen of Swords and the King of Swords. I think these really work for, I love how they, um, they literally look like they could be standing next to one another, like in either direction. I love that. And then we have the, the coins or the pentacle suit, our earthly suit. Our ace and our two here. Love the balancing, the delicacy of that. The three working, carving. Oh, look at this four with the goose. That's amazing. The five, really buffeted by the wind and the cold. The six, yes. The seven, watering our garden. The eight. Oh, I love this. I love when we see like um, kind of uh, forge style work in the eight. I don't know why. I've always really liked that. The nine of coins. The ten. Page. Knight. Yes, this is such a beautiful image. Queen. The queens are so ornate. All the courts are. And the king. He's kind of intense looking. They all look like I would expect them to look. I feel like I can definitely read this out of the box, which was really my number one thing I wanted to find out, right? Is can this just be read? Even if you don't really know the, the folklore. Um, I really want to go watch that video though and learn more about, oh, that's a lovely shuffle. <gasps> that's lovely. So if you had their Dark Mansion Tarot, this is much smoother. This is still a soft touch or um, sort of... Um, it feels like it could almost be rose petally, but it's smoother than that. So it's much easier to shuffle than the Dark Mansion was. The Soft Touch Dark Mansion was pretty sort of clumpy. This has that lovely touch or feel to it, but it, it's much smoother and it comes together as you can see pretty, pretty nicely. So let's see what a fan kind of looks like. Yeah, it fans beautifully, which the Dark Mansion would not have done this. It would have been much clumpier. So they've, they've really done a nice job with the finish on this one. I haven't had one of their decks since the Dark Mansion Tarot, um, but I'm quite pleased with this card stock that feels really good. So let's just see what a few cards look like on the table. Five of Swords, the Emperor, and the Fool. I mean, these look beautiful. I think these really need the borders. I'm glad the borders are black. I think it's less distracting than if they were white. I feel like it'd be too much contrast with all these deeper tones that we see in these cards. But I think they look lovely on the table together. And I think you can definitely read these right out of the box without, 
with, you know, I don't think you need all of the folklore, but I mean, I feel like you're missing something if you don't have it, you know? So I'm going to check out that video that I referenced. Again, I have to go look it up, so I can't even say it out loud because I don't even know who the creator was or anything, I don't remember, but I'm gonna go look it up. I'm gonna put that in the description box so that, that I can watch it and hopefully you can have a look at that as well if you're interested in learning more. And hopefully these guys do come out with a PDF guidebook. I've read some comments that indicate they've said that before, so I don't know if you know anything or if it's already out uh, and you wanna share anything about that in the comments below, I would be so grateful. But for now, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me while I did this walkthrough of the Slavic Legends Tarot. I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Let me know if this is one you picked up or you plan to pick up, I would love to hear. And until next time, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.